What we're going to be going over here, product sales and manufacturing product costs, and we're going to do it in terms of what they call the cost volume profit analysis. This is where we're going to examine how the total revenues, total costs, and our operating income here changes with the units sold. So let's go down here and look. Uh, start with what they would call here a cost volume profit graph. So what we're going to have laid out here, we're going to have uh, really an X and Y axis here and with on our X axis this is going to represent our units sold here and I'm just show, that's the quantity of units sold here I'm just showing for our example from 0 to 200 in our Y axis this is going to represent dollars here either dollar costs or dollar revenues okay and then along with our graph here what we're really attempting to do here is we're uh, in this case it's going to be a, just a linear relationship here where we're going to have our total revenues line showing and all our all these relationships here are really built on the uh, basic algebra equation here where you're going to have y your y intercept here or your y cost here is going to be equal to the slope of the line here times the unit sold plus whatever the y in wherever it in wherever our cost or our uh, revenue line cost uh, crosses the y axis and that is represented by b here okay that's just the basic uh, algebra here not to uh, expand on it any more than that here but if you're familiar with it it's it's a reference that you would use here when you're trying to determine your uh, total costs and your total revenues here so what we're going to do here let's just go over these lines one by one so starting with our total revenues line here uh, pretty simple here you have uh, when you sell zero units you're going to have zero rev revenue dollars coming in and as you move up and sell more units you're going to have greater revenues here so looking at uh, uh, setting our line here first off what we want to do is we want to determine the slope here or the steepness or the increase in our lines for both our total cost and our total revenues and we're going to be looking at our total revenues here and this is when we're talking about this slope here that's really the change in y here those change in dollars over the change in x so as we have a change in our unit sold here we're going to have a change in our dollars here and again they're represented by this this the slope here or this line here so looking at our uh, total revenues here it's pretty easy uh, to figure that out and we're gonna say that our selling price here is just fifty dollars per unit on this uh, product that we're selling here so to determine our total revenues it's simply the quantity sold times the fifty dollars per unit so if we have uh, sold a hundred units here that just happens to be our break-even point that we're gonna look at we're gonna have uh, uh, received a uh, Y dollars here 100 units times $50 what would that be $5,000 here okay so that's how our uh, total revenues line would be here so that's really going to be equal to Y here or our Y dollars received the slope in this case we have to define that to be $50 per unit and the way we can do that here is really the change in y over the change in x so we sold uh, say we sold one unit here uh, uh, x, one x unit then the change in y is our selling price of fifty dollars and that would give us a slope here fifty dollars divided by one that would be a slope here of fifty and now we can go on and just look at it in terms of say you had change in X here too you sold two units then the change in Y would have been fifty dollars times two units or a hundred dollars you still come up with the same slope it would be a hundred dollars uh, here in Y change in Y over two units here and that still gives you a slope of fifty dollars so I'm um, a slope here of fifty when you're talking about this line here and we'll we'll go over those slopes later here so you want to establish the what your slope is and the equation of your line in this case it's just a linear equation here and it's easy to determine but you can see if you're going to have a, a different relationship you're going to have some nonlinear relationship then you're going to have it's going to be more complex and this uh, uh, equation is going to become a more interesting here but okay so we've taken care of our total revenues it's simply the selling price here uh, that you'd have per unit times the quantity sold now 
Coming back to our total cost line, we have to establish that. Now, when you're dealing with these cost, volume, profit relationships here, you really have two different costs that you're going to deal with here. And this is like for manufacturing or producing a product. You're going to have your variable costs uh, defined here as v VC here. And we're going to say it's $30 per unit. So for every unit you sell here, it's going to cost you in variable costs or changing costs per unit, $30 per unit. But then you also have what you call the fixed cost, the fixed component. And those are costs that, uh, before you sell any units here, or uh, you have that cost that's fixed. So you're going to start out with your total cost here, essentially, in this case, we're going to have a fixed cost of $2,000. So our variable costs actually start here uh, on our y-axis at $2,000. Any variable cost is in addition to our fixed cost. So fixed cost is going to affect where your slope of the line here for your total cost line here. And a total cost is really your fixed cost, fixed cost that we have in this case $2,000 plus the variable cost here per unit. So if in this case, we're going to have $30 per unit here, a variable cost. So for every unit you go up here or you increase every unit, you're going to take that times $30. So let's just look at our slope for that here. So our change in Y here is $30 per unit and change in X, that just say it's one unit. So there you're going to have a slope here of $30. But the key is here when you're talking about that total cost line, you're also going to have that Y intercept here. And the B value here in that Y intercept here happens to be our fixed cost here of $2,000. So what you would do here with your total cost, again, you go and you figure your slope of the line. In this case, it's going to be $30 per unit. So every unit that we increase, we're going to have uh, a cost above the $2,000 here increased of $30 per unit. Okay, so uh, again, let's just look at it in case uh, if you look at $60 per unit here, or just say it's $60 here total cost, that would mean you would have had a sold two units here. So $60 here, a total cost here, plus the $2,000 here, a fixed cost here. So that would be the case here where you just sold two units. Okay, so what you want to do here, you you really want to lay out your line here, your total cost line here, and your variable, or your uh, total revenues line here. And you're going to have some intersection between your total cost and your total revenues, and that's going to be the break-even point. And uh, this here is key. We're going to be looking at how we calculate that. But the difference here that really want to look at in this cost, volume, profit graph here is our losses here versus our profits. So we start out with a fixed cost here at 2000 and we increase our uh, variable cost here by $30 per unit. So it's going to increase that uh, 30, uh, slope here of $30, the uh, slope of $30, but we started at 2000 And then we have to compare that to our revenue, our total revenue line here. Well, we started at road zero here, but it increases at a greater rate here than our total cost. So we're going to be looking at the case here. We're going to be closing in our loss. So when we started out here with uh, units sold here of zero, we had zero revenues, but we had the fixed cost here, 2000. So we have essentially a loss here. So anything in this area is a loss here until you get to that break even point here between your total revenues and your total cost. And then anything beyond that break even point then you're going to be starting to earn a profit. So that's where you get your cost volume profit relationship. And we're going to be looking at the case here where we're going to be identifying some target points here uh, for a unit sold here. And let's just, just for our basic example here, let's just say uh, we have a unit, say, of 170 units here. So you trace up your unit sold here on your uh, y-axis here, you uh, units sold here on your x-axis, and then moving over to your y-axis in case of total revenues here, what would that be? That would be those 170 units times $50 per unit. And then your variable costs would be, again, 170 uh, units here times uh, $30 per unit, but then you would also have that fixed cost that of 2000 that you'd have to add in here. So here you can be determining your 
revenue you know, can determine your total revenues and then you know your total cost here so the difference between your total revenues and total costs here that is going to be the profit or what they call your operating income so you can see anything above that break even point here you have your increase here in operating income that's based on uh, these units sold and it, the fact is that your cost line here is at a slope uh, dec doesn't increase as fast as your total revenues line so you get a greater profit the more units you sold the greater profit you're gonna have okay so that's your cost volume relationship and then the other thing is identifying this graph here uh, just off your graph looking at your variable costs well that's everything and that's everything here uh, above your uh, fixed cost here up to your total cost line so that is your variable cost just looking at 200 units here well it would be the 2000 here fixed cost up to where your uh, total cost line would here would be here okay so that's your variable cost here you look at it in those terms from your x looking at it in terms of a specific point here on your x-axis then you can trace it over to your y-axis the y-axis here is really a function of those the x-axis units so and then again fixed cost that's just a fixed amount that you would have here and that's steady there's no that's just a constant amount from whatever fixed cost you have over the total unit sold so whatever number of units sold here however many it increases your fixed cost just remains the same here okay so let's just go up and let's just look at this uh, relationship here where again we were talking about that slope intercept form here for our basic algebra that's where that y-axis those were the dollars that we either uh, had in revenue or cost here that really equals the slope here of our, our lines here either total cost or revenue line here uh, times the number of units that were sold plus whatever intercept intercept you had on your uh, y-axis here when x was easily set to zero so uh, m here is is really our slope of the line here b is our y-intercept and x here are the units sold and this for our example here where our total revenues again uh, we had fifty dollars per unit that we received times whatever number of units we have and then our we started out here with zero dollars which is zero revenues zero units sold you're going to have zero dollars so your y-intercept is going to be zero and that's really just looking at this total revenues is just your selling price times your quantity sold now our total costs are a little bit different here because those were our variable costs here thirty dollars per unit times whatever quantity we sold plus that fixed cost here of two thousand dollars so nonetheless here why that is our dollars is really a function of the unit sold okay so now let's go over and let's look at just our putting this this cost volume profit uh, that we just talked about on our graph here into equation form and they just say CVP equation so what we're going to do here our operating re operating income that's really our equation up here so our revenues again remember that was our selling price here times the quantity sold and then our variable we would from our revenues here we would have to subtract out our variable costs here and that was really our variable cost times the quantity sold and then taking our revenues and our variable and whatever we had here in total for our revenues less our variable cost then we subtract out our fixed cost that was so that equals our operating income and that's just what we went over on our graph here and now we can take and rearrange this equation here so we can take this quantity sold simple uh, algebra here just move it over outside the brackets here so we're going to take uh, our selling price here less our variable cost here now you take that totally times your quantity sold we just factored out our quantity sold here from our selling price and our variable cost but nonetheless you still subtract out your fixed cost now we get down to our other equation here this is really what they call the contribution margin here equation so this is the case here where you take the selling price less your variable cost that really equals what they call the contribu contribution margin and that's really the do uh, dollars per unit 
that you would have here uh, contribution and then you would take your quantity sold you take that quantity sold here times your contribution margin and that just rearranging uh, rearranging our setting this selling price here in our variable cost to our contribution margin again you would subtract out those fisks cost here to de determine your operating income here and if i didn't mention here this e e rearrangement of this equation that's really the operating income so we really looked at our operating income here based on this uh, cvp equation here uh, after it's rearranged and then we converted uh, taking our selling price less our variable cost we define that as the contribution margin but nonetheless we come up with the we'll come up with the same operating income okay and this is the uh, contribution margin equation so the contribution margin it's really the difference here between our total revenues and our total variable costs here that's the contribution margin Total revenues would be the selling price times the quantity sold here, and our total variable cost would be a variable cost per unit times our uh, quantity sold. Okay, now we can go down here and let's just look at this contribution margin. Uh, you can redefine it here as a percentage or a ratio here. So that contribution margin as a percentage or ratio, again, it would be defined as this. You'd have your selling price minus, minus your variable cost, Remember, we define that as our contribution margin, looking up here. That was our contribution margin, dollars per unit here. But now uh, we can convert it into a percentage or a ratio by dividing it by the selling price itself here. Okay, so contribution margin as a percentage or a ratio defined here. That is the contribution margin. That is the selling price less a variable cost again just divided by our selling price so how we would use this contribution margin we just take our that let's just say for example we had revenues here uh, fifty dollars that's our selling price say we have 170 units sold so we would have received as revenues eight thousand five hundred dollars now taking our contribution margin we can calculate that that was our fifty dollars here per uh, revenue per unit or sales what we received per unit of $50, less our variable cost here of $30 per unit, again divided it by our selling price here of $50 per unit. So all we're doing is co converting this contribution margin here as a percentage here. From here it was, at, we originally calculated as dollars per unit, now we're just gonna use it as a percentage. So the division here, 50 minus 30 divided by 50 is 40%. So taking that times our revenues here of $8,500, for those 170 units sold times 40% here, the contribution margin percentage, we're gonna get a contribution margin here of $3,400. Now, you subtract out less your fixed cost here of $2,000, so you're gonna get $1,400, a fixed cost here from the contribution margin here of $3,400 is gonna give you $1,400 here in operating income. So you can see where the contribution margin here is this percentage or this ratio can be used here uh, to determine your operating income here in this case but we had this contribution margin it was reduced by whatever the fixed cost is to determine your operating income okay so uh, next let's just go in and we'll look at applying that cost volume profit uh, to some uh, determining our break-even points and, and and a targeted profit and so forth now we're going to be looking at calculating what they call the break-even point here, and we're also going to expand that into calculating what they call uh, some targeted operating income or some profit here. So starting with our break-even point, and really we're going to be going through an, a def number of different methods here to understand this break-even point and how you calculate it here, but uh, each of the methods are going to involve the same assumptions here. So when we're talking this, about this break-even point, that's really the uh, point here, and we're looking at it on our cost volume profit graph here. That's the point here where our revenues that we receive here are going to equal our costs here. And that's going to be based on some units sold here. So we're going to have to calculate the number of units sold for, to determine this break even point. And based on those number of units sold, then we can determine the revenues or costs. And in this case, since we're talking about a break even point, our revenues here are going to equal our costs. 
So what do we have to start with here and looking at it on our graph here again our units sold is our x-axis here and they increase here and for our example from 0 to 200 here and then on our y-axis here those are our dollars either our costing dollars or, or our revenues here. But what we have to start with here when we look at this break-even point this is the case here where I'm, sh I'm going to be showing here I got it in blue here that's going to be our revenues line here and that really starts at zero here you in, in this case um, you're going to for we're using the case here where we're fifty dollars per unit we're going to get uh, in revenues or we're going to that's going to be the selling price so as you increase here the number of units sold your, your revenue is going to increase by fifty dollars times those number of units sold. And what we're talking about with break-even point, our revenues line here is a steeper slope and it's going to increase faster than our cost line here. But the fact is when we're talking about costing here, uh, we don't start out at zero, we start out at in this case two thousand dollars, the fixed cost. So the fixed cost is constant over our units sold here but when we get up into uh, what we call here for our costing we're going to have to add in variable costs and in this case it's going to be thirty dollars per unit the variable cost but nonetheless here you looked at our revenue here we started out at zero and that would be our revenues or our income that we're getting here but when we start with our costing for those uh, units sold we have to start at two thousand dollars we have to start uh, include uh, we have to start at the point here I, uh, based on those fixed costs so with our um, uh, our costing line here we're only going up at thirty dollars per unit but we started out at two thousand it has a, 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 a less of a slope here than our revenues line so it's going to intersect at some point here our revenues are going to equal our cost at that point so that's what we want to go and we want to calculate okay so we're again we got several different means of looking at that so let's start out with our first um, with our equation here our operating income equation here that we had that we looked at before but this is the case here where your revenues are going to equal your costs so what we do is we set that equation equal to zero so I've got it I've got it looked at uh, looking at it here so that's going to be our first means here now that equation is really our selling price minus our variable cost in that quantity uh, or that uh, difference here times the quantity sold so we have to determine the quantity sold but taking that difference here and I factor it out this equation here I factored out the quantity sold already from our selling price and our variable cost but taking the difference here selling price times our variable cost times the quantity sold we have to subtract out those fixed costs okay so just looking at our example here selling price minus our variable cost times our quantity sold minus the fixed cost has to equal zero in this case but we're looking for that break even point so this is where we're we're not going to have any uh, revenue we're going to have a zero profit essentially at that point so here plugging our numbers in fifty dollars selling price fixed cost thirty dollars and then that would be times our quantity subtracting two thousand from it again two thousand fixed cost here so we come up with we, we want to set that to zero so now what we would do here just uh, solve a uh, reducing our subtracting fifty dollars from thirty we're going to come up with twenty dollars here times our quantity that's going to be we're going to subtract or add two thousand to both sides here to move this two thousand over to uh, the other side of the equation so we get twenty dollars the difference here times the quantity equals two thousand dollars so quantity here just divide both sides of the equation by twenty dollars here and you're going to get the quantity equal to two thousand divided by twenty dollars here that happens to be the contribution margin that's going to equal one hundred so that's our break-even point here one hundred units have to be sold to break even so we're not going to have any uh, income at that point here this is going to be the break-even between our costs and our revenues okay so then our selling price okay so we've determined the number of units we have to have sold here 100 units now for our selling price really simple here just to break even revenue that would be taking your selling price here fifty dollars times the quantity the break even quantity here of hundred that we calculated that's going to give us our break even revenue here of five thousand dollars so uh, this five thousand dollars here really represents 
our revenue that we would have received here and it also represents our cost so the break-even point is zero revenues minus costs would be zero at that point okay so the second means we could look at here we'll just look at it in terms of these line equations that we have we're going to have a equation there's a linear linear equation because these are straight lines we're going to have an equation here for our revenue line here and an equation here for our cost line and that's really uh, we look at the slope here. Revenue, we have to determine the slope of our revenue lines, and that happens to be $50 that we talked about here. And then the slope of our uh, cost line, that happens to be $30 here. But plugging those numbers into our uh, line equation here, where y equals m, m, the slope here, times that quantity that we have to determine here, plus whatever b is. And b is the uh, y-intercept here in our equation. So uh, that's what we're going to be looking at here. M slope and, e and slope for our, our revenues line is going to be 50 here and it in the B or the y-intercept here where it crosses the y-axis here for our revenues line is actually zero so we don't have any B-intercept but when we talk about our costing line here well we have a slope of $30 uh, per unit here, or slope of 30 times those, that quantity that we're going to have to determine here, but we're going to have a B intercept at $2,000. Okay, so let's go and look at how we uh, determine our quantity here based on our uh, setting our line equation. Uh, revenues equal our cost, or whatever. Essentially, here we'll be looking at Y here and comparing both of those line equations. So let's go down and look at that here. Okay, line equations here, revenues equals cost. Again, remember that was the were the y-intercept here for both our revenues and our cost, and that's going to be some dollars here where our two different our lines are equal. Our revenues are going to equal our costs. And again, a line equation was that m here to slope times the quantity here plus whatever the intercept was here. Okay, so for our revenues, remember our line equation was slope was 50 times the quantity. We're start trying to solve for the quantity here. That uh, uh, revenues line here is going to equal the cost line here, where we got the variable cost here of $30 per unit times Q here. Again, Q here is the quantity we have to solve for, but we have to add in that fixed cost here of $2,000. That's the uh, where the B intercept or where that line starts here, the variable cost start here at $2,000, the fixed cost. So just solving our equation here, uh, moving our $30, adding or subtracting 30 from each side here, we're going to get uh, the $50 revenue less our $30 cost times our quantity. We just moved, uh, re just moved the, move this equation, this, these number, the $30, the variable amount over to the left hand side here to our revenue side. So just simple uh, arithmetic or algebra here. Now that is going to equal $2,000 here with rearranging that equation. So now just taking our 50 minus our 30 here, we get $20 here. Um, actually, that's the contribution margin, as they'd call it here, times our quantity, again, equal to 2,000. And then a quantity here, just divide each side by $20 here. You're going to get a quantity here of $100. So what we did here in this equation here, this X amount here in our equation here, our line equation, that really equates to our Q amount or the quantity we had to solve for. So our break-even point here, this is where we looked at those line intersections. Okay, so that's based on the line equation itself. Now let's, you know, let's go up here again. So our break-even revenue here, again, based on our line equation, same amount here. Uh, that $50 selling price times the quantity of $100, $5,000. So in both cases here, we are able to determine the break-even point here for the unit sold to be 100, and then our break-even point here for revenues or costs here, as you want to look at it, would be $5,000. Okay, so now we really have one other thing we can look at here, and let's look at it in terms of the contribution margin that I mentioned here. Contribution margin, that's simply the selling price minus our variable cost here. Now, uh, what we would do in this case, we take it times the quantity sold, the contribution margin, but we take whatever we have 
and that amount here, we'd have to subtract out our fixed cost again. And again, because we're solving for the break-even point here, we'd set that equal to zero here. So that's really our operating income equation here from the equation point. So just looking at our selling price minus our variable cost times the quantity here. This is what we're, we're solving for, the quantity here, minus our fixed cost here. We set all that equal to zero here. So just solving it here, $50 for the selling price, variable cost 30 again times our quantity, and then subtract out the $2,000 fixed cost equal to zero, and just rearranging our equation here, making our, our uh, netting our 30, uh, subtracting our 30 here from our 50, we're gonna get $20 here times quantity again we're resol solving for equals two we move two thousand over to this side of the equation here so we get two thousand dollars so our quantity here is going to equal uh, well we just divide both sides here by 20. so quantity here equals two thousand dollars here divided by 20. again it equals that hundred a hundred units sold here that we calculated up above for both of the other cases. But now just expanding on that here, let's we're going to look at our calculating our break even revenue here based on this contribution margin. So for our contribution margin here, uh, this is the equation we use here. So we take our contribution margin divided by the selling price here to determine the per contribution margin percentage here. So uh, contribution margin again was our selling price minus our variable cost. And dividing all that here by our selling price, well, we had a selling price of 50 minus our variable cost here of 30. That quantity, net amount here, 20, divided by the $50 selling price here, we're going to get a contribution margin percentage here of 40%. So now we can go in uh, calculating our break-even revenue based on that contribution margin. So again, we just have the fixed cost here of $2,000 and then we would divide it by that com contribution margin percentage of 40 percent here in, in, in this essentially this twenty dollars this twenty it's just substituting the forty percent in here for this twenty dollars here now we come up with the break-even revenue and that's based on that quantity sold here 100 units here so break-even revenue five thousand dollars same as we calculated up above here using the other the uh, our equation here where we had our selling price and our variable cost i'm just showing it in terms of the contribution margin here and we then we resolve to determine our break-even revenue we had to de determine our contribution margin percentage and then based on that again we were able to determine our break-even revenue okay so that's for our break-even point here in our break-even revenue now let's go up here and let's look at the case here where it ties in with uh, some what they call some tar targeted operating income here. And we're going to set that equal to $1,400. So essentially, we want to find some quantity here, units sold, where we can earn $1,400 in our example here. And that is really uh, some, some uh, point here where we're looking at our revenues, less our cost is going to equal that targeting operating income or profit here. So what we do here, same thing as we did for uh, set determining our break even point here where we set our, uh, we had to determine our income versus our costs here where they were equal. That was the break even point. So now what we're going to do, we're going to in, use this equation that we have up here that we went through before and we're going to set it instead of setting it equal to zero here for the break-even point we're going to set it equal to fourteen hundred dollars that's going to be what we call our tar targeted operating income again okay so what we would do here again using that equation our selling price here minus our variable cost times our quantity here minus that fixed cost again in this case it's going to have to equal the targeted income here $1,400. So plugging our numbers in 50 here for selling price, variable cost of 30. Now we have to s solve for that quantity here, the quantity of units that have to be sold here to determine this $1,400. But from that amount here, we have to subtract out the $2,000 fixed cost, and that all has to equal $1,400. So what we would do, just rearranging our equation here, move the two, or add 2,000 to both sides here, that removes, actually you're just moving the 2,000 over here from the left side to the right side of the equation here. So you get 1,400 plus 2,000 equals $3,400.
and then our our selling price minus variable cost that's twenty dollars times the quantity here we're solving for that quantity so again just solving our equation here taking dividing twenty into both twenty dollars into both sides that leaves our quantity here is equal to the thirty four hundred dollars here divided by twenty dollars which equals 170 a quantity here of 170 so to earn fourteen hundred dollars here in profit or what they call targeting target operating income here we had to so sell 170 units and okay just looking at our graph here again again looking at our uh, profit line here I'm just calling it total revenues here we're going that's going to be at that 107 uh, units sold here of 170 and then our profit same thing here that's our total cost line here. Uh, we're showing that here. Total revenue here I'm showing as our total revenues. That was the revenues that we earned here on those say or that's the total set, excuse me, the, the revenues received on that on the sales that we made here. And then our total cost line that was again remember that was our fixed cost. We start out our total cost variable cost here. First it's, we have to include that $2,000 fixed cost and then move it up here. It happened to be at $30 per unit variable cost. So uh, determining our profit here, just to cross check what we've done here to uh, based on those, that quantity we uh, had to determine here at $170 to earn $1,400. Our total revenue again would have been $50 selling price times the quantity 170 that's going to equal $8,500 so that's our total revenue here now moving down to our total cost that was the variable cost here $30 times that quantity we calculated here at 170 but we had to add in the variable cost here at $2,000 so that all equates to $7,100 so now we can determine our profit here based on total revenues here we determine that to be 8,500 and subtract out our total cost here of 7,100. So there we're going to get the difference gives us that profit here of $1,400. So that's just uh, looking at our graph here. That's just the cross checking here based on that tar uh, $1,400 targeted operating income we looked at. So our profit here, looking at it from the terms here of our uh, revenues here versus our cost here subtracting our revenue dollar our reven total revenues here that we had at that $170 or 170 units sold 8500 subtracting our total cost here for those 170 units here of $7100 the div difference gives us a profit here of $1400 so that's what we're talking about targeted operating income or profits here just to make a point here again uh, when we're talking about uh, these uh, break-even points here, didn't mention it earlier here, but you can see here when you're talking about the break-even point here, you're really looking at where your loss here. You started in at a greater loss here with zero units sold, and because you have that fixed cost that has to be figured in when you're talking about your total cost here. And as you move up and you sell more units here, your loss is going to be lesser and lesser on a per unit basis here and then you also you meet that break even point here and then beyond the break so below the break any quantities below that break even point we calculated that to be 100 units in this case we actually have a loss but any quantities that are sold beyond our break even point we're going to have a, a profit or some we're going to have some profit on those sales here based on our uh, our line the equation our lines here our, our total cost versus our total revenues and then uh, as you move up here you sell more units you're going to have a, a greater profit here and the only point is when we're looking at these these lines here we have to figure what the line equation is or the slope would be in those lines but when you're talking about total cost here you have to start out at the point here where you have to cover your fixed cost first. In this case, it was $2,000. So that's where our total uh, cost line is going to start out on a per unit basis. So zero unit sold, you still have to have, you're still going to have a co total cost here of $2,000. And, and because 
our variable cost beyond the $2,000 fixed cost here. Variable cost is going up at $30 per unit, whereas our revenues here, even though we started it out at zero here because you get zero dollars for any there was no unit sold you get zero dollars but our revenues here is going up at fifty dollars per unit here so the slope or it's increasing at a greater rate here but then we get to that break even point and then remember below the break even point that was at hundred dollar a hundred units sold here we actually had a loss, but our loss was narrowing as it moved, or lesser of a loss here as we move up to the break even point. But then when we go beyond that break even point, say that, that 100 units here, when we increase it to 120, 130, 140, we're going to have a greater profit here. And that's, that's what they're really looking at when we're talking about this cost volume uh, profit graphs here or equations. So I guess that'll summarize what we're talking about here. All right, so that'll conclude it.